、今現代の死は病気にしろあるいは交通事故にしろ、えー、何らのドラマがない、えー、英雄的な死というものもない時代に我々生きております。Yukio Mishima was one of Japan's post World War II big three authors, and a man that can't really be summed up in a single video. But here we go anyway. Born as Kimitaka Hiraoka on the 14th of January 1925, Yukio Mishima had a cruel childhood in which he was separated from his parents by his samurai blood grandmother at a young age. Natsuko, a descendant of Tokugawa Ieyasu, one of the great unifiers of Japan, wouldn't allow Mishima to go outside to play sports or even play with other boys his age. Under this upbringing, Mishima would have been taught about the greatness of the samurai, and it's arguable that he would have turned out completely differently had he remained with his parents. Finally, when he was 12, he returned to his normal family, and it was here when he began to write his first stories. However, many of these stories were destroyed by his anti effeminate father, who found writing to be too soft for the young boy. Mishima's first published work, Forest in Full Bloom, was published when he was 16 during the middle of World War II. And it was here that his pen name, Yukio Mishima, was created. The story goes that during a train ride to an editorial meeting, his editors decided to name it after a station that they passed, Mishima Station, and from the Japanese word for snow, Yuki, which they saw on Mount Fuji. A key moment came in Mishima's life in 1944 when he was drafted to join the Imperial Army. Mishima wrote a goodbye message to his family, but during his medical check, he was misdiagnosed as having tuberculosis and was therefore declared unfit for service. Notably, this incident is included in Confessions of a Mask, the book which launched Mishima to fame. Mishima published 34 novels in his lifetime, along with 50 plays and 25 books of short stories. The most famous of these are the aforementioned Confessions of a Mask, The Temple of the Golden Pavilion, and The Sea of Fertility Tetralogy, which was believed by Mishima to be his masterpiece. I'd love to talk in depth about these, but for now I'll just recommend that you read them in order to get the best experience. Mishima wasn't just a writer, however. He also acted in several movies and directed, produced, and starred in his own. Patriotism, or The Right of Love and Death, is one of the most interesting works by Mishima. It's a 28 minute film starring himself that focuses on all the themes linked with him ritual death, beauty, life, love, and grand scale. Featured in the film is a pro emperor Japanese soldier and what follows after a failed coup d'etat that he was a part of. As you may already know, this is somewhat similar to Mishima's own life story, specifically how it ended. Now, before we talk about his death, there's another often overlooked aspect of his life that's important to know, and that's his obsession with youth and the body. Published in 1968, his essay, Sun and Steel, is a great pointer to his ideas, in which he reflects upon his experiences with bodybuilding and training. From a young age, Mishima had an inferiority complex about his body, which some believe to have derived from his being declared unfit for service in World War II, as well as from his grandmother's abuse. And described how he hated the fact that many intellectuals ignored their bodies in favor of their brains. Of course, what springs to most people's minds when they hear about Yukio Mishima was his death on the 25th of November 1970, aged 45, in an event that has been dubbed the Mishima Jiken, or the Mishima Incident. The story goes that Mishima finished his final novel, The Decay of the Angel, the last of the Sea of Fertility series, and on the next day, he went to visit a headquarters of the Japan Self Defense Force with four members of the Tata no Kai. The civilian militia he founded. I told you there was a lot I couldn't include. Once they were inside the headquarters, they barricaded the office and tied the commandant to his chair. Mishima demanded for the soldiers to gather on the ground below, and once they had done so, he stepped out onto the balcony to address them to begin a speech. The speech was an attempt to begin a coup d'etat in order to restore the power of the emperor, but was cut short by heckles from the irritated soldiers. Mishima climbed back into the office and committed seppuku. His death was seen by many. Including his biographer, to be a poetic expression, and the nationalist ideology behind it was only a pretext. One quote that I believe quite nicely sums up Mishima's life, work, and views on death can be found in Spring Snow, the first of the Sea of Fertility. He had never looked forward to the wisdom and other vaunted benefits of old age. Would he be able to die young and, if possible, free of all pain? A graceful death, as a richly patterned kimono. Thrown carelessly across a polished table, s l i d e s unobtrusively down into the darkness of the floor beneath. A death marked by elegance. しかし今の我々は死を描きながら生きているのかどうか、それさえ疑問であります。私の死との一番親しかった時代は戦争中で。えー、戦争が済んだ時20歳だったので、えー、10代の私どもは、えー、いつ死ぬか
いつどうやって死ぬかということだけしか頭の中にない。